Hello, welcome to a very happy Carrow Road. There are still quite a few people buzzing around outside here. It's been the day's late kickoff in the Premier League and it's been an incredible night, a remarkable night, one that we'll talk about for many years to come, I would have thought. Norwich have beaten Manchester City 3-2. The reigning Premier League champions, Champions League semi-finalists. There was a report this week that said they were the first billion euro squad in terms of transfer fees. And that's how much they've spent on putting together this incredible squad, packed full of international talent, probably led by the best coach in the world in Pep Guardiola, who's just had the most remarkable career with Barcelona, Bayern Munich and now at Manchester City. And Norwich have beaten them, despite being ravaged by injuries. Been Going into this game, we were wondering how they were going to put a full substitutes bench together. And the answer was that Daniel Farker put two goalkeepers on the bench. That's how depleted his resources were for this. Michael McGovern and Ralph Furman both on the bench. There were basically no more options with Christoph Zimmerman, Tim Closer, Onel Hernandez. I won't go through the full list. So many missing. It meant that we, well, there were only four changes to the starting lineup in the end. Uh, there were two home Premier League debuts for Ibrahim Amadou and Sam Byram who were both really good. Amadou was named the sponsor's man of the match rightfully I would probably say he was certainly up there but picking a man of the match today from this Norwich team was was a mission really because this was an inspired performance it really was. Daniel Farker has quite often said in his press conferences and in his media that he's trying to achieve something extraordinary at Norwich that's what his aim has been and he's well and truly done that today. A 3-2 win against Manchester City, who had only lost one of their last 28 games, and that was to Liverpool in the Champions League semi-final, uh, sorry, to Tottenham in the, in the Champions League semi-final uh, at the end of last season. And they, all the odds were stacked against Norwich. They just should not have been winning this game. And Carroll Road felt nervous, to be honest, uh, before the game. I, I didn't think it felt really loud. I thought people were, were, were a bit worried. And then just what followed was incredible. The, the opening goal came in the 18th minute. Kenny McLean, one of those four players who'd come into the team, rose at the near post to meet an Emmy Buendia corner, nodded it into the top right corner from close range, and the noise was just incredible. I don't think I've heard that sort of explosion of noise at Carrow Road many times before. That this, Even though it was the 18th minute and it was 1-0 and nothing was settled at that point, it was like Derby in 2011. It was like Millwall last season or Sheffield Wednesday. It was, or Nottingham Forest on Boxing Day. It was one of those moments that we, that just, the belief swirled around the stadium. All of a sudden, the fans thought, well, hang on, maybe there is a slight chance that we could do something today. And they did, because they went 2-0 up in the 28th minute, and it was Todd Campwell, local lad, of course, academy product, who was taken to the Premier League so well, made his England under-21 debut in the week alongside Max Ahrens and Ben Godfrey. And he um, he benefited from more good work from Emmy Buendia. Right, he was right back to his best today. And uh, Buendia basically threaded P Pucky through to the right channel. Uh, Pucky then unselfishly, he looked like he was shaping to shoot. Everybody probably expected him to shoot. But instead he squared it nicely to, to Todd Campwell and he had a nice easy tap in. And the celebration of that being 2-0 up against Manchester City, it was just like dreamland. It was pinch yourself time. But they managed to... Uh, to get 2-0 ahead despite all their injury issues and the celebrations for that were, were just wild. Carrow Road was just transformed into an atmosphere that I've rarely seen before. You know, I've been coming to Carrow Road most of my life, 33, or was 33 on Friday, and I, I think this will be one of those games that when I'm hopefully a lot older than that, that I will think about and I will remember and it will be one of those I was there nights. So from there, it was looking good. Um, of course, it wasn't going to be easy. Man City, it's not like they didn't turn up today. They um, they played well. They created plenty of chances, and we'll come on to that a bit more. Uh, Raheem Sterling, England star, of course, uh, he headed against the post in the first half when it was still 2-0. There had also been a penalty claim for Norwich. Uh, John Stones uh, handled, well, he did handle a Buendia corner, and it seemed like there was a VAR check going on, although it still wasn't totally clear, to be honest. And uh, the decision was no penalty, so they didn't get the chance to go 3-0 up. 
and then Man City get the uh, the goal that they need. Sergio Aguero, and he uh, that was just before half time, 45th minute. Uh, it came from Bernardo Silva, and Guardiola can take a bit of credit because he swapped Sterling and Silva on on the uh, on the wings. Sterling will be getting no change out of Sam Byram at right back at all. So they swapped. Silva cross comes in, and Aguero has a nice easy nod uh, nodded header into the uh, into the bottom of the net, close range. And even then, obviously that was um, a setback, but the reaction from the home crowd was to applaud for the effort up to that point just to be leading Manchester City 2-1 was was great and so they were roared down the tunnel at half time Chris Domagola and Eddie Rima part of Daniel Farker's backroom staff were waiting for the players to high five them as they all came off the pitch they don't normally do that they were absolutely thrilled and they wanted to make sure that the players were realizing what the, what they were doing was pretty special um, and I, I remember saying to Paddy in the press box at half time that the opportunity they had in front of them, what we could be about to see in that second half could be seriously special and that is how it turned out to be, thankfully. Um, so after it was only five minutes after half time, Buendia again absolutely crucial to it. He robbed Nicholas Otamendi in the box, don't know what he was doing, daydreaming, gets robbed by Buendia and again, bit of unselfish play, he could have had, had a shot, been said he squared for Pukki who just about managed to get the ball out of his feet and poke into the net. Um, from close range in front of the Barclay and just spark another wild roar to be 3-1 up against Manchester City was just ridiculous and um, it was a heck of a game from there though no, no, Manchester City did react uh, 57th minute Guardiola puts on Kevin De Bruyne and Gabriel Jesus no less and that did uh, provide a reaction but they were just chucking the, box, the ball into the box as much as they could trying to pile the pressure on Norwich and it was a pretty chaotic second half um, at points. Tim Krul made an absolutely brilliant point blank save from Otamendi at his back post late on and it was celebrated like a goal. There were people in front of us in the city stand, which is obviously isn't always the most vocal, jumping up and punching the air in delight, celebrating it. And there were tackles like that in the second half. Byram got forward and um, produced a tackle which prevented a counter. Buendia charged into on. Campwell did very similar when he took the ball into, into the corner. There were moments when literally people were on their feet celebrating tackles and saves and blocks like it was the most important thing in the world and it just made for an incredible atmosphere. Uh, they did get a goal, it was in the 88th minute, Rodri, their, one of their big summer signings, he found a little bit of daylight through the uh, crowded Norwich box, low shot from 25 yards, Krull did get a glove to it but he couldn't keep it out, so that obviously tees up the grandstand finish, it's 3-2 at that point and of course it's pretty nervy although at that point you're thinking well they should at least get a draw from here a draw would have been a phenomenal result all Norwich fans would have absolutely snapped the hand off the off snapped off the hand that offered uh, a point before the game let alone three uh, so that really did tee up a uh, nervy finish but then when the whistle finally went it was it was party time it was just like the Blackburn game at the end of last season when they were celebrating promotion it was really really special and I think every, it was just a party from that point on. So, um, yeah, that was uh, a pretty decent night. And uh, a few Norwich fans still around there uh, looking to get in camera. And um, that moves Norwich up to 12th, which isn't half bad. Uh, yeah, as I say, six points from the opening five games. And they've now played the champions, the Champions League winners, the Europa League winners. And they've come through that and can now head to Burnley and Crystal Palace with the best possible result in that back pocket to build on. Whether they can or not, we'll, we'll have to see. That's for another day. But if you can't take confidence from this, from a much-changed team getting this result, then you're not going to take confidence from much, are you? Um, and as I say, Manchester City, they'd only lost one in 28 in all competitions up to this point. But that's a major setback for them in the title race. Liverpool beat Newcastle in the lunchtime kickoff, And, uh, yeah, for Guardiola, that's obviously a, a massive blow for Manchester City. But... No, uh, no Norwich fans are, are worried about that tonight, as you, as you can see behind me. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty special night at Carrow Road and, and one, that we, uh, one that we will all remember. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Come on, then. You're in now. Someone's going to have to come talk to me. <laughs> Well, there we go. That's the, that's the sort of night it's been. I'm sure all these guys are going to remember it for the rest of their lives. It's uh, It's been very special. So uh, head over to pinkin.com for all the reaction. I'm sure you want to read the report on an occasion like this as well. Just savour it. I'm looking forward to being able to watch the game back in full. So, um, yeah, enjoy Match of the Day tonight. I'm sure they, well, if they're not on first on Match of the Day tonight, then Norwich 
fans for once are justified in having a good moan at Gary Lineker but um, I'm sure they will be so uh, enjoy the moment enjoy the week and we'll uh, build up to Burnley from here